Hello. Today, two teaching assistants, Michael and Go, join me again in the discussion of the course. Like the last time, they will ask me questions and I will try to answer them. Shall we begin with another of Michael's questions? In the lecture, you say, if one's longevity makes only hardships, then the longevity is not desirable. And then how about the opinion that longevity itself is not desirable, whether it makes only hardships? Yes, uh, some people say that being able to live forever is a curse, either because they get bored doing the same thing over and over again, or because the life is precious precisely because it is finite. Others say that life is inherently bad because you cannot escape from suffering in one way or another. So according to them, it's better not to be born. Now, I didn't cover such opinions in my lecture because they are rather extreme, but perhaps they are worth considering when thinking about the question of longevity and eternal life. In the manga, Although Kanako expresses her wish for her grandfather's illness to be cured by reproductive medicine, he does not seem to find any meaning in prolonging his life because it would go against the law of nature. In any case, if her grandfather was to wish for prolonging his life, who should be responsible for the medical cost? As it was um, elucidated in the lecture, uh, this issue shall be considered as a matter of social security. Even if we could admit that it is imperative to opt for the prolongation of the life of human beings in general, it would inevitably, inevitably uh, cause a great stress on the social security system due to the soaring cost of the life extension treatment. Then, it is perhaps necessary for us to distinguish between the case of illness or functional decline due to senescence, and the cases of the others. Is such a clear distinction between general medical treatment and the, that of life uh, extension possible? Oh, this is a very good point. As a matter of justice in the allocation of health care, when it's not possible to provide all the health care that people want, society has to set priorities among medical care. For example, Society has to make the priority of treatments that are not strictly necessary or are not cost-effective lower than the priority of others. This might become a very serious issue when most people could live to be 120 years old. But on the other hand, thanks to the development of regenerative medicine, if people can live much longer than now and work until, say, 100 years old, then we may have a healthy social security system and we may not have to worry too much about distributive justice in health care. So, it depends largely on what kind of assumptions you make when thinking about this issue. In the manga, Kanami's grandfather says the new replacing the old is the natural cycle of things. However, in the lecture you say Due to advances in medicine and improvements in public health during the 20th century, people now live longer than ever before. Medicine and public health are very important, but not natural in a sense. So, how should we distinguish between what is natural and what is not natural in bioethics? Yes, uh, the idea of naturalness or unnaturalness is very contested, contested in bioethics. Half a century ago, the in vitro fertilization or so-called test tube baby was thought unnatural by many people. But now few people would consider it unnatural or so unnatural that it should be banned. Like the concept of human dignity, what's important is to try to understand the worries people have when they invoke the idea of naturalness or unnaturalness, when they face a new medical technology. Thank you both again. What do you think about these matters? <laughs>